Hi, my name is Charles Sterling from Sterling Power Products. Um, just a quick lecture or chat about uh, what we call regenerative braking or what uh, the vehicle manufacturers call a smart alternator. The date's 2016. The reason I say that is this is a very fluid market and um, all the different vehicle manufacturers really haven't sell settled on a standard yet as to what exactly they're doing with this um, regenerative braking thing. The essence of it is that you can save miles per gallon and money, CO2 emissions, etc. by only generating electric or as much as possible while you're slowing down or braking. So it's a good idea. It does what it says it does on the tin and it will save money. It's on Euro 6 engines plus. Um, you know, from the point of view of what it does, you can't beat it. However, the problem is when you put a secondary battery system into your vehicle, the normal conventional way was to use a split charge relay to join the two battery banks together. Well, that's no longer really possible. Um, there's almost like three reasons for that. The first reason is for the regenerative braking system to work, your front battery or your starter battery, whatever you want to call it, by definition must never be full because if it's full, you cannot put the surplus electric into the battery when you're, when you're slowing down. So the software at the front says to the front battery, you must never charge more than 80%. So you've still got a 20% gap that we can boost charge electric into when we're slowing down. So that's the first problem. So if you join a secondary battery bank to the primary battery bank with a relay, then you can never charge the secondary battery bank over 80%. You just can't do it. So that's your first problem. The second problem is the swing, the voltage swings. When the um, vehicle is not charging, and say you're driving on a motorway on a straight road, the voltage will drop down to as low as 12.2 volts. Now, 12.2 volts, that will keep your windscreen wipers working, it'll keep your headlights working, but it won't actually put any electric into the battery. And it's also at a voltage which allows the battery to discharge slightly in order to make room for the eventual boost charging into the battery. So, um, when you're at 12.2 volts, obviously your front battery isn't charging, and if you had a split relay system, your back battery isn't charging either, so you're not charging. And the third problem, which is a bit ironic really, is when you are charging on the regen braking system, you find that the voltage goes up as high as 15 volts, and in actual fact, in the case of a Renault we checked recently, it was at 17 and a half volts. Now this is, this is a high voltage. This is, I don't know why they're going that high, but you know, it's not my, you know, position to tell them what to do. So certainly people like Ford are at about 14, 8, 15. Mercedes is hitting 15, 5. And Renault and other manufacturers are going up 16, 17 volts. Um, so when you are charging, your AGM battery bank or your gel or whatever battery you've put in the back is probably a maximum charge voltage of 14.4 volts. And now you're at 15.5, 16, 17 volts. So when you're at low voltage, you're not charging. But when you're at the high voltage, you're really, really ramming the current into that battery. Now that secondary battery could be empty. Your primary battery or your engine start battery is probably 80% full. So when you try and put in, say, your Mercedes, you have a 150 amp alternator. When you hit 15.5 volts and you've got a 160 odd amp alternator, your front battery, because it's almost full, it's 20% it's empty, um, you couldn't put 160 amps into it. So you're only going to put in 40, 50 amps, which is fine. If your back battery is empty and you've got 100 or 200 amps of AGM or something that's empty, it'll try and take the full 150 amps. And uh, it will. So if you've got a 80 amp or 100 amp relay in the middle, uh, that's that gone, that's that melted. And your cabling needs to be capable of carrying 200 amps. And then on top of that, you're destroying your battery because those batteries can't handle, you know, 200 amps or 150 amps when you're doing the regen braking thing. 
So to recap, you've got the three problems. Number one, you can't fully charge the batteries anyway. When you're at 12.2 volts, you're not charging the batteries anyway. And when you're hitting 15.5 volts, you are charging the batteries, but you're wrecking them. So those are the three problems when you try and run an auxiliary charging system on a regen braking system. Now, the relays are, that's done, forget it. That's not happening anymore. You cannot use a relay to charge the secondary battery system. Um, so what we do is a thing called a battery to battery charger. Now what the battery to battery charger does, um, it effect, effectively does uh, three things. The first thing is when your batteries are 12.2 volts or your, when your engine start batteries are 12.2 volts, we go, that's fine. So we take the 12.2 volts and boost it up to whatever you've preset the output of the battery to battery charger at. So say it's set at 14.4 volts. So we take the 12.2 in and boost it up to 14.4. So from the secondary battery system's point of view, it doesn't see any fluctuation on the voltage uh, on the primary side at all. And you get the full 60 amps or 120 amps, whatever you want. The second thing is when the primary battery goes up to 15.5, 16 volts, whatever, we take that 16 volts in and we drop it down to 14.4 volts to charge the secondary battery system. And the third thing is we current limit. So you might have a 150 amp alternator or a 600 amp or a million amp alternator, whatever. Um, if you purchase a 60 amp battery to battery charger, the most you're going to get across is 60 amps. So you're not going to damage your secondary battery system based on high input currents from the primary side. So we boost on low voltage, we reduce on high voltage, and we current limit to stop any really high currents going through. And on top of that, we also charge the secondary battery totally independently from the primary. So this, the primary can do whatever it wants. We are focusing on fully charging the secondary battery system. So that's what a battery to battery charger does. The end result of the battery to battery charger is a fully charged battery, safely charged at the correct voltages. So you'll get much longer life out of your battery because the charging has been done correctly. We have done tests on a Ford Transit where we have used a data acquisition system and we have the actual graphs, etc., from the journey undertaking in order to fully monitor what the regen braking is doing. Um, we're going to throw up a graph now to show you what we recorded on the voltage levels uh, from a trip we took on the new Euro 6 uh, Ford Transit. As you can see, the massive voltage fluctuations on the alternator voltage. Um, you know, this is not a problem from the vehicle's point of view, but it's a massive problem from the secondary charging point of view. You can see the voltage fluctuating from around 12.2 up to 14.8, but on other vehicles that goes much higher, up to 15, 5, 16, 17 volts, um, which exaggerates the problem even more. If you want to know if your vehicle is a regen braking or smart alternator system, there's no point asking the guy you bought the van from because they just don't know. Uh, get yourself a cigarette lighter, um, put a voltmeter into the cigarette lighter and plug it into the cigarette lighter uh, on the vehicle and go for a drive up the road. Put the voltmeter on the dash or have someone with you. And if you're driving and your alternator is putting out say 14 volts or 14.2 volts all the time, over say 10 or 15 minutes, you don't have to go very far, then you've got a non-smart alternator system. If however, your alternator voltage drops down to 12.2 and then shoots up to 15 volts and goes backwards and forwards, then you have a smart alternator system and that's just it. Another thing we've noticed or we've had um, conversations about is there are some companies that have found, especially in Ford, they have in their workshop manual a way to override the um, regen braking or smart alternator. Because if you're trying to analyze a problem on your van with the voltmeter and the voltage is going up to 15 volts and down to 12 too, you'll, you'll go crazy. So apparently there's a method of neutralizing the regen braking system while you're in the workshops. Makes sense. However, some companies have been using that on the road. Uh, now you need to be really careful, well not really careful, it's just a really stupid thing to do. All vehicles have emission certificates 
based on the tests they have undertaken in order to be certified for Euro 5, Euro 6. Now, I'm 99% sure that Ford or whoever have their certification based on the regen braking because at the end of the day that reduces the CO2 emissions and gets you more miles per gallon. So it would make sense that your tests were done with that engaged. If you have disengaged it and you're driving around with this system disengaged, then your emission certificates are invalid because your vehicle is no longer conforming to what the manufacturers did the tests in the first place under. In actual fact, you're doing pretty much the Volkswagen trick, which was to do your tests with all the software switched on, and then once you'd finished the tests, knock off the software that was annoying you, and uh, get you know what you want out of the vehicle's system. Well, that hasn't worked out so well for Volkswagen, and I'm pretty sure whoever is knocking this off and using the vehicle on the road is breaking exactly the same laws and is opening themselves to exactly the same um, ridicule and problems, basically. So if you're knocking this off and driving around in it, be warned if you are doing the CO2 emission system and people find out you're driving illegal vehicles, your certification is invalid, and the insurance companies, etc., will not honor any accidents, etc., you have. But anyway, that's up to you, and um, have fun with that. Okay, thanks then. Bye.